Welcome to episode 73 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Free Markets. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It is important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb, or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating, uh, when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of this podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view free markets. With that, let's dive right in. Hey everyone, we are back and today we are going to be talking about free markets. Again, remember, we are going through the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party. In this season, we are focusing on one item from chapter three that has 25 issues on the uh, of what libertarians believe. And so we're going step by step and we're going to walk through each one of them. Today, we're going to be talking about the free markets. So here's what it says in the book, quoting, libertarians support free markets. We don't have free markets today. Our system in the U.S. is partially free, but horribly perverted with regulations, high taxes, loopholes, and subsidies. Often, big business supports regulations in order to hurt their competitors and help themselves, or they push for special handouts. For example, agribusiness Archer Daniels Midland lobbies and gets subsidies for its corn processing activities. That's called corporate welfare, and libertarians are against it. Okay, so why do we believe this? So let's kind of let's kind of kick this off here real quick. When you own yourself, that means you own the things that you do mm -hmm. and the results of what your body produces. It makes no difference whether I use my body to produce a garden um, in my backyard, write a book, produce a podcast, or start a company that ends up growing to employ 1,000 people. My only obligation is to honor any contracts that I make with others along the way. Beyond that, no one is permitted to use force to interfere with what I want to produce make me produce what I do not want or impede consenting relationships with others. Pastor Tubb, how are you? Let's talk I, I, about I, free I'm markets. Good. All right. So here's the thing. I always feel like that when we do this, like you're the smart guy and you got all these things. I oh, go, Lord. Well, here's the idiot. Now the idiot speaks. We're and, in and, trouble if I'm the smart so, guy. So, but but here's okay, here's what's funny is I, I have my notes here and everything, but what I just started telling you about downstairs before we got started was about how we're talking about how this gets in the way. Keep, there we go. I want to bring that back up for a yeah, second. I was because checking how it, audio actually, yeah, how it actually said in there, and I'm like, wait a minute, what were we just talking about? That here locally we had the big game in town, right? And that gentleman chartered a ship. A little boat brought people up on right. it, and then random safety checks from right. the Coast Guard came in and found that he didn't have a permit, a right. license permit, not for the boat or anything, but for the charter portion right. of it. And, and then there was a whole thing made about it, and um, they were talking about fining him $60,000 for that. And, and now bear in mind, insane. everybody was safe. Everybody was consenting adults. It says, it, in the article, it even says that there was the captain and nine passengers. And so wow. I put, that's the threat. Right, and, and so my my complaint about that was along the lines of this is too much government. Right, and, and this is this actually fits into the craziness of it. Like it wasn't my plan to include this in this, but there it is. It's the fact right. that this guy's running a thing. These adults said, "Hey, I'm good. I want to hop on your boat. Take me up to Jacksonville for the game. Right, everything's fine." But all of a sudden, because of something that made no difference ultimately at all, but the right. government has these guidelines or licensing was actually right. the problem. That became the issue. Right. Not that consenting adults didn't mind. Hey, I know this guy. I trust him. It's his boat. Right. Clearly, he's safe. My argument, as I started talking to people about this, I'm like, you know what? 
Now, I don't mean we might take this the wrong way, but what about these people who get liquored up and they go spend all their time out on the lake all day acting like fools and everything? Right. That's perfectly fine. But this one guy who's not really hurting anybody, nine other people say, give me a ride, basically. Right. And that's perfectly. And, and they got onto him about that. Right. So I, I, I struggle with that because I, I truly believe the market will dictate. Right. I, I don't think we need a bunch of government infringements coming in and saying, I think the people will decide either I want to do this or I don't want to do this. Right. I, I do. It's almost like what we talked about last week with uh, health care. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll let us make the decision right. as far as that goes. Yep. It's and, and by the way, folks, he's talking about the Florida Georgia game. Well, which I did not watch. I, I think I might have watched like ten minutes of it. Like I saw on TV. No, I, I like it because Gators lost. So oh, okay, no, fair no, enough. It, it, so I'm not gonna. I'm not a Bulldogs fan, but I just okay. somebody beats the Gators, I'm fine with. Gotcha. It. I, <laughs> and I have no particular preference whatsoever. Uh, but it's you know it is very interesting because I think a lot of people try to justify all these things like as if it's really needed. Right. And one of the things that we pointed out last week when we were talking about healthcare is that in many situations, probably most situations. It's not that libertarians have a problem with some of this oversight. It's the problem is the problem is um, where the oversight is set. We tend to believe that government doesn't really do a good job of right. it. Right. But let's keep giving them more responsibilities. Right. Let's but give we them keep more giving things them, in our lives to get involved. Right. In. We keep mm-hmm. giving them more and more responsibilities. And I, I think what we need to start doing is we need to start looking at it and say, all right, what is it that they're actually accomplishing? Are they really making us safer? So if we look at any protect, I mean, just name something. Name something in the free market. Anything. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see how smart I am. Oh, okay. Let's Plato. Plato. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this guy got me. He's got me. Okay. So I'm gonna make a couple assumptions here because you really got me on this one. But Plato, um, I actually have some downstairs because I have it's a top around, uh-huh. right, and um, I know that it says like it's non toxic, right? It. And so the question is, like, do we need the government to monitor manufacturers of Play-Doh and say, hey, you can't use certain chemicals? Maybe it's Play-Doh. And, you know, don't be mad at me, Internet. But maybe it's Play-Doh from China that has lead-based paint in it, right, to make the color. I don't right. know. They, they uh, use, you told you know, me some, something. Some sort right. of toxic <laughs> material in there, you know, and they're just like, oh, this is super duper cheap. Mm-hmm. Well, again, if people remember from the last episode when we were talking about things like consumer reports. Right. And you can have easily a consumer reports um, entity or multiple entities, which would be which would be even better, mm-hmm. but you can have multiple entities for children's stuff. And right. so you could go on there and you can say, what is the rating? Does this company maybe give this or this product a particular rating? And they could say, hey, we've independently tested it. And based on all the known science data out there that we were able to find, and based on our test, we are going to evaluate this as being safe. safe. And, right? and, and and the thing is that then you can still decide on your own. Right. You, you know, so if there's a knockoff version, because usually there's a knockoff version right. of everything, you go, okay, well, what's the difference in it? And a lot of times right. the knockoff is not anything except for maybe doesn't last as well. Right. You know, stuff along those lines. So the premise is all still there. Right. But, but here's the thing. I, I I don't default to this thinking that everybody will just do right. I mean, I think we have that coming up later. But I, I do think that a company has an interest to make a product that they can sell. Right. And, and I think that once they start saying, okay, we're going to put lesser product into it, we're going to put cheaper parts into it, right. they'll realize, okay, that's going to fall off a little bit. Right. It doesn't take the infringement of government to say this is the standard. Right. The market will dictate. Right. When people start saying, no, I'm going to buy the original Play-Doh because I know what it's like. It's proven right. itself over years. My kids have used it. Everybody's kids right. have used it. I don't want the dollar store version. Right. But you know what? Other people go, I can only afford right. the dollar store version. So I don't want to go without because government got involved. And what right. have we found? That every time government gets involved, what tends to happen? Prices go up at the yeah, same time. Absolutely. And, and so, like I said, I default, like I was saying, was to free market. Allow the people mm-hmm. to decide that government should not be getting involved mm-hmm. and picking the winners and losers inside right. of this. Um, we have it here in town with the football team. Mm-hmm. Okay, that the that our city council keeps voting to give them more money. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and they're not producing a very good product. But inside of this, here's what's happening is is they're not allowing the people to say, hey, wait a minute, if we believe this, we'll invest in this. Right. Instead, they're deciding who's, we're going to throw our money at this product. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we've lost our say in, in, in the fact that we, we need that input. That's where the free market comes in. We decide what we want to be involved right. with. And we don't need government constantly telling us. Now, do we get into the area that you started talking about is the idea of putting in restrictions and guidelines and stuff like that. And what started happening was 
when I talked about the boat thing, and I said just too much government about that boat captain. Right. Um, the comments started going, well, what about life jackets and fire extinguishers? And I told you it got as far as Somali pirates and everything. And I'm like, there's no in-between inside of here. But here's the thing is, I, I don't understand why we can't say, okay, for this ship, for example. Okay, they're talking about life jackets and fire extinguishers. I'm fine with that. I, I think at the level of safety that it's fine. But when we start getting into licensing and mm -hmm. permits, it goes back to what you're saying. Were they making it better right. by doing it? Were they making it safer? Right. Um, that guy operated just fine without these special right. licensing and permits. So I don't think it's a matter of safety, even in this right. case. I think it's revenue producing. Right. I, I think it's it's oversight, it's control and revenue producing. Right. And and I think and, and some libertarians may be upset with me over this and I, but I'm gonna be yeah, okay we're libertarians. With we're gonna get mad no matter right. what. I mean, we're gonna okay. fuss no matter what. Somebody's <laughs> I, I, I always am in trouble with some libertarian somewhere. But if the city is providing if the government is providing some services, maybe they're providing um rescue services or they're providing fire services or police services. I don't think it's inappropriate to set some minor set of right. standards mm -hmm. to say, look, we are going to provide. So, for instance, we're talking about like the Coast Guard, right? Or or whoever it is that's patrolling the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, that was the Coast Guard for that one. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just say the Coast Guard patrolling the water and they say, All right, in order for us to do our job effectively, we need a certain level of something from you. Okay. Right. In order to make sure that when we get there, um, there is a better chance that we can actually serve you. What do you mean? So like, give me an example of that. Using the boat example. So using the boat <laughs> example, you mentioned fire extinguishers and you mentioned life, life jackets. jackets mm -hmm. Right. So I think I don't think it's inappropriate necessarily if the state is saying we got Coast Guard services, they'll come out to your rescue, they'll come out and help you out on your boat. Right. But we but in 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 um in trade for that. It is expected that you'll that have, you have these things. These like things. you're doing your part of, but what right. about, but here's the problem. Because then, if your person that, goes overboard, then at least maybe you have a, a, a life jacket to, to throw them, them. Mm -hmm. until we get there. But but here's the problem. Here's the difference in that, and, and I agree with you in that. But this wasn't even about that. Right. Th this was a uh, they're they're docked right there right. the thing, and they're, they're coming out and they're doing these random inspections. Right. What it's not a that's not a the, right. the boat's just there, so they're doing these random checks for licensing that right. ultimately doesn't make it any safer right. at all. And I think that's my problem. I got no problem right. with the okay. They say, hey, listen, you got to have a fire extinguisher because you know fire on a boat's very dangerous thing. Right. So I understand uh, the, the right. life jackets. I think those things are fine. Yep. But I think that we've gone too far. Yes. And, and the problem is, like we were already talking about, is that when you try to have this discussion with people, mm -hmm. they always go to this far off extreme about right. you know, what about this like no no there's this middle area that we're avoiding because here's what i'm learning the more that i kind of get out and i talk to people and i try to explain to them libertarianism here's the first thing we have to do we have to get them to start thinking that wait a minute just because government in this case keeps telling us this is the right way we gotta be willing to go why is it the right way right like well, why is this the thing that right. makes sense um like i i mentioned on, on one of the things for the kiosk for getting your car tags to have your car registered mm -hmm. Um, all, all I put on it was government permission to use our own property. Right. And, and they go to this far off extreme area. And I'm like, no, no, no we got to change our thinking first. Right. We, we, it's almost like, I hate to say it, the government has trained us mm -hmm. that we think like, oh, no, we have to have these things. Right. And we never stop to think, why? Right. Why do we have to have these right. things? And I think that before we can even be effective as libertarians, we've got to kind of change What's being said, we got to change the language. We got to mm -hmm. change what the talking points are because we have to get them. The people start going, wait a minute. What is this doing? Instead right. of coming from the side of this has to be. Right. Why don't we look at the other side for a few minutes and go, why right. does this have to be? And I think that once you start making people think the other side of it, like, wait a minute. La last night we had a, a Bible study and, and I happened to mention that right there about how I just said, hey, it's government permission to use our own property. Right. And then the people were there were like, yeah. You know, like I never thought of it that right, way. Right. And I think that in order for libertarians to start being effective in even free market stuff, we have to be able to kind of start changing the natural thinking. Right. We have to get them away from this is what it is and right. because somebody told us this. Yep. And then I think that once we can get them to change their thinking and open it up a little bit, right. they're a little more open to new ideas. Okay, right. now how do we fix this now? Right. If we're going to be honest, that's where libertarians often fall short. We have the complaint and our complaint is right, right. but we don't often come with a solution. So right. we have to, I think that we have to get past the complaining part because right. I think it's just all legitimate complaints. Right. Okay. So what's the alternative? Yep. What do we offer up in turn? Right.
And 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 I want to go back to where oh, I yeah, dragged us where we ought not to be. All right, go ahead. Oh, I, no, 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 no. We, okay, we're doing good, and, and, I, right. and I and I and I love where we're going with this. I did want to follow up, and I, and I think this fits in with what you were saying. You know, when we go back, because you you mentioned we've been trained to think mm-hmm. in a certain way, and people have really been trained to think this is for my safety, but that can go to no end. Where's the right? Mm-hmm. And so what I'm what I suggested earlier that libertarians might get upset with me. You know, by saying, hey, maybe certain things kind of work in tandem with the services that we're getting, Mm -hmm. you know, so the first argument might be like, well, they could just make an argument for anything. Yes. And then say, well, that's, you know, that's the cost of us providing the service. But I think that I I think that's uh, I think it's a bit cheap. And I think what we need to look at is, you know, earlier when I was quoting this book. You know, he said that libertarians support free markets. We do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have a free market today. But he said that it's horribly perverted with regulations. And I think the perverted part now, I'm kind of I'm kind of taking his words and I'm using them in a way that maybe he did not intend. But it's perverted for sure, without a doubt, in a way that we now look at the government as providing all these things that are allegedly for our safety. And so it's not really the government saying, okay, in order for us to be effective with this service that we are currently providing, mm-hmm. we need this minimum from you. That's right. not the thinking that we have. No. Because if we did have that, then the challenge would be when the government says, well, we need to implement this rule. Well, why? Why? How does, how does it help you help me whenever you're providing this service? Okay. Right? How does paying a, a large s- sum of money for a charter license, help you, help me if there's an so, issue. And, and, and even, but even if, like, how I got, does that help I you st- run my business? Right, because like, I've got my fire extinguisher, I've got my my life jackets, which I would have on a small boat or and, a large boat, and, one of people or 10. You know what's funny is that inside of that, like, I, I started thinking about that, I'm like, okay, like, like me personally, anytime I go on anybody's boat or anything, we go kayaking, I always keep a life right. jacket on. And, and most everybody I know that owns a boat always make sure that no matter what, I think a lot of them, regardless right. of whether they get caught with it or without it, they, they kind of have this level of, I want to be safe. Right. And so I, I think that even those things aren't pushing it too far to a point where we go, that's right. crazy. We can't do that. That's personal safety. I'm right. fine with that. It's when you start implementing these things, like you said, that doesn't make this better one way or the other. It doesn't right. make it. In fact, all that it's really doing, as we're seeing, is that it's impeding right. businesses, especially right. small businesses from getting started because right. they realize that we can't cover all of these expenses in order to get going to the standard right. that government said we have to have. Right. Uh, we actually just went through all of this and not, I don't go too far down this road with all the COVID issues and the lockdowns and how right. we couldn't go to the small store down the street, right. but I could order anything I wanted from Amazon still. Right. I could go to Walmart. Right. Um, I could go to Home Depot or Lowe's, but truly there is these little stores all around here. Like, well, we have to shut down because we can't, we can only keep so many people in. And to me, that's impeding. Why? Based on the safety that the government says, here's an idea. Why don't you let the businesses and then the people decide? Right. Like, um, like I personally, okay, I I don't want to wear a mask anywhere. I don't want to do any of those type of things. I decide, I decide the places I want to go to. To me, that's free market decision. Government's not saying you have to do this. Government says you can, I love the idea of government saying you can do this. I'm right. fine with that. Like right. everybody's like, I don't want government saying anything. No, when government says, "Hey, if you want to implement a mask policy, that's fine." The right. people will decide. Right. Okay. Um, we recently here in town we had uh, two council members uh, talk about wanting to sh- shut down a strip club. They were bragging on how they were going to shut down a strip club here in town. Mm -hmm. And not because of the strip club itself, but because of the events that were happening outside of it. Right. And and so I actually made a big stink. And well, first I have to always explain to everybody that I am a Christian. I am a pastor. I'm not going to the strip club. Right, right. But they have a right to exist. Because here's what I found. You know what? The market has dictated... That they want that business there. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So I don't like the idea of these two government officials. Right. They don't like it for whatever reason that they go, oh, we're going to shut that down. Right. Why? Just because you don't like it. And this right. kind of falls into libertarian thinking as a whole. Right. That if you're not bothering, if they're not bothering, let them do what they're going to do. Right. Even if I don't condone it. Even if I don't right. want to be any part right. of it. And, and so I don't like the idea that they come in and they're saying, well, because of this safety, it's always safety right. or stuff along those lines. Right. Because people will give up freedoms yes. for safety. I think yeah. we call it the Patriot Act. Right. And, and so right. We'll, <laughs> so we'll all... Call a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there, actually. <laughs> That's the worst one. That... Or, uh, the biggest and yeah. the worst right well, you now. You know what it's because people will just do that. Seatbelts, right. all these things. Do, yeah. do you realize there are so many things being put into automobiles? 
automobiles now. All these right. safety guidelines right. that are government implemented. Yep. And you know what that causes? The price of that car to shoot causes up. Causes to go up. And, and these are things that sometimes I don't I don't care if I have them or not. Right. Let me be honest with you. I know we've covered 13 different topics all side of this. No, but, it's all good. But like these vehicles, you know, they have them on the side view mirrors where you can, it'll light up when somebody's in the range. Yes. Like I love those. Yeah. Now for me. I'm going to pay attention. I like what other cars have them. Right. Because I go, you know what? They see me. Right, right. Okay. But you know what? With them implementing these standards for safety, right. it starts doing this. And it then does. what happens? People can't afford right. these vehicles and stuff right. anymore. And it doesn't help officers. Right. So, if an, so you know, just so I want, because I, I really want to make sure that I clarify uh -huh. my point, because I'm, I'm sure did I'm going to. Did I, did I no, just, okay, no, I want to no, make no, I, think, <laughs> okay. I think my point works very well with what you're saying. Okay. And my point about, hey. If it's if it's a matter of working with, you know, whatever service that the city is, you know, the government is providing, mm -hmm. then there may be a justification for some sort of regulation. So yes. most of the things that you mentioned, uh -huh. I would I would strongly argue, do not either impede or improve the services that we get. Right. So a seatbelt. Let's just take a seatbelt for instance. You know, that's one that's definitely on. Like, well, it's for safety. Mm -hmm. Right. It is for my safety. Right. I, I'll give them that. Right. Um, not that it's not that it's any of their business per se. They, However, they don't really care about your safety. Officer, let's be honest. <laughs> right. When the officer shows up mm -hmm. to ensure that I'm driving safely, or say, "Hey, it looks like you are swerving," or "You have you been drinking?" You know, something like that. The seatbelt, it doesn't it doesn't impede his ability, his or her ability to provide the service of being an officer. Right. It it just simply does mm -hmm. not. Right. So uh, same with many of the, the other things that you mentioned. And I think that's the, you know, where you mentioned earlier, we got to kind of get in this new way of thinking. We need to get in this this new way of thinking. And rather than, than being, hey, it's all about our safety. It needs to be, how does this improve or work with the service that you that are you providing? Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't provide a, a benefit to that service that they're providing, then they shouldn't be regulating. And, and then you start thinking about that is that, in my vehicle, whatever right. happens to be, what is government really doing? What does government right. have to do with that service of right. me running my vehicle? And, right. and it's really nothing at all. Right. They're not all those in that things that all. you mentioned, the lights, mm -hmm. the safety <clears throat> features, all the, you know, the tire pressure sensors. Yep. Um, you know, none of that, uh, because the service of an officer is to um, intervene Okay. Right? When there's a criminal act. So if somebody's right. robbing me, maybe he shows up and he helps out Usually or they, takes a report but can, or whatever, okay. you know, uh -huh. those kind of they, things. They, they, they're more of you the know. after the fact type things. They are. Yeah. They very much are. But they, they, they may show up while the a, a crime is still being committed. Right. It's possible, you know, the neighbors call while... Somebody's um, being, still breaking into your house. While someone's still breaking into right. my house, whatever. Or I call 911 while someone's downstairs. Right. You know, those <laughs> kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. So so it's possible. And, and um, I'm trying to think of where I was going with that. But leave it but, to me to jack things up. So no, no. Just, so let's just say that right the here. Idea, tell them the, I was fine until the, you started the doing this. The idea is that is it, we it, need to be able to look at it and say, if if it doesn't fit with you providing a service, role. you have no mm -hmm. business regulating it. And that would cut out quite a few things. Like, we get, cut out seatbelts because who? if I get into an accident and the seatbelt could have maybe saved my life or maybe the seatbelt could have reduced my injury. That is not something that the the city or the government is providing a service for. My insurance company the, might want to get angry. The insurance company might be. Mm -hmm. The hospital may not like it. The hospital well, hospital shouldn't mind. That's right. business for right. them. Well, it's crazy okay, as that yes. sounds. I mean, uh -huh. you know, it depends on how. I mean, I'm sure but, the the staff would be like, "Oh man, another you know another but, clown but coming, of, not wearing his helmet it, on his right, motorcycle." Exactly. Right? But but think of it this way. But is they're that, not the government. So they're not the government. Right. Exactly. They're a service at that point. Correct. Okay. But but here's my thinking, and and, and I use this because. If you look at the guidelines, okay, like I'm not terribly old. I'm 47. Right. Okay. And I can look back at things that we had growing up. Like there weren't these crazy seatbelt laws. I right. remember I remember laying across the back seat on the floor. I remember right. like none of these things were in place, but yet here we are. Yep. Uh, my wife is, is a few years older than me. And I remember a little while back, uh, they showed me a picture of her car seat. Okay. No, this was not a car seat. Like it was, it was a piece of metal that and it was not like padded. Like I'm like, what is that really going to do? Right, right. And, and I looked at. It, I, here's my point. We seem to still live right without all of these things. Yeah. Without and, and like right now, um, 
like our, our son and daughter-in-law, um, they recently had a child. And, and so they had to buy a car seat, of course. Which, right. I, once again, I want to make it very clear. I am not against kids being in car seats. Because right. everybody goes to, oh, you don't care about kids being safe? No, no, no right. I'm not saying that. Right. But because you understand the government has gotten involved to the a level of safety right. that has to be inside of that car yep. seat. And, and you start looking at it, and you know what was running into. They're like, I can't afford these. Right. Like, you're saying that car seats now, to meet government standards, you know, they're three, four hundred dollars sometimes. Right. And if you start thinking about, like, wait a minute, like, and, and I will be the first one that will get, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if I'm driving down the street and I see a little kid just popping all around the car, I'm like, dude, put that, like, I'm guilty. I'm not going right. to lie. Like, put that kid in the car seat. Right, right. But once again, does the car seat have to be that standard? And, right. and I can look at it now and go, you know why that kid's on the car seat? They can't afford it. Right. So then what happens? Right. Police will pull you over for that. Safety, right. and, and so I, I think it, we walk down this nasty road of where right. does it stop? And right. So all I want us to do is start going. Okay, why? Right. Just, I, I just want us to be open to the conversation right. of why. I yep. want to be able to say why do we have this? Like I said, when I said that about our registration for our vehicles, like government is telling us it's okay. Because like, what about the other tax? I said, well, well, wait a minute. I said, didn't you pay those taxes when you purchased the vehicle? Right. Oh, yeah, I did. Right. I said, so what's the point of the registration? Once again, I'm I'm not saying we have to get rid of and, and I always feel I always feel like we have to add, especially as libertarians, we gotta always add this disclaimer. I'm not saying get rid of all of these things necessarily. Right. right. But I, I am saying let's question some of these yeah. things. Yes. Because think about it. Every um <clears throat> what is it, every ten years here in Florida you have to renew your license. License. Mm -hmm. Every ten years I renew my license. So let's say I'm born and raised and I live my entire life in in Florida, mm -hmm. right? So I turn 18, I go and I get my, or maybe 16, I go and get my driver's license, right? And then let's say, let's just say that I renew it when I'm 18 because now I'm an adult, right? right so now yeah. I have my adult license. Yep. And so then when I'm 28 and then 38 and 48, 58, 68, all those years that I'm going and I'm paying to have my license, um, every time I buy a car and get plates, I have to go get it plated. Yep. Um, I have to pay registration fees. Each time I do that, especially if it's the same thing, like right? So if I'm going to get my license renewed or if I have the same car for, yep. my wife had the same car for 20 years, right? And so let's just say that every two years she goes and gets her license uh, plate renewed and, and her right. registration every two yep. years, right? So that's 10 times. And then however many times that she's done it, um, her, her license, what has improved? What has gotten better? Nothing. At any time. It's the same. Nothing. It's, like, it's been the same. It's the same plate. It's the right. same thing. Like everything's the same. Right. And I go, what? what's the point of right. the change? Like, you know, it's funny. Like you mentioned, you buy a new vehicle, especially like here, um, they give you a temporary tag. Right. So we had bought my wife a couple years back now. She bought a new vehicle and um, they kept the same tag. Obviously, mm -hmm. it doesn't change. Right. And, and so I remember um, I wasn't paying a lick of attention. I'm going to be right. honest with you. And, and so I had the temporary they had a temporary tag on there and yep. it was getting ready to expire. And I called the uh, the dealership. I said, hey, what are we doing about her tag? Like, what's going on? And they go, no, no, no. The other one should be right up underneath it. <laughs> and I and I went out and checked. Sure enough, it was. It, the, her, her permanent tag was the same one as before, but there had to be a temp tag. Mm -hmm. Why? Right. Like, 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 like why? Right. It is, you understand there's an expense. Right. Inside of a temp tag. And so here's what happened. And I hate this. Somewhere at some point, some form of government, whether it's local, state, or federal, right. they made a law. Mm -hmm. and, and let me be honest with you, we, we, we would all say, well, it's because somebody was making them make a law. Right. You know, somebody was going to get some financial benefit out of them right. passing this law. Right. And, and so somebody somewhere made this law that makes not a lick of difference. Like, I don't, I don't think we understand how much our government makes decisions that impedes these type of things right. just for some randomness. Right. And why? Right. But why? I, I just want us to start questioning inside free market decisions right why is the government getting involved right. why are they saying these things and i'm right. not going i'm not going to be the guy who says wipe it all out and let, no 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 i i i i'm fine and once again libertarians might turn on us a little bit i'm fine with a level of this is the standard right just the standard and, and, and maybe it's the simple things right like you know you know what the, i i'm not necessarily against uh, occupancy numbers like okay for say that, that that could be a true safety issue that if you have too many people in here during a fire this could be a problem because right. you can only get out so many doors I, i'm not necessarily angry right. with stuff like that but right. it's the annual year okay now this year here you gotta do this again right this year you're like wait a minute nothing changed right from when i did this initially when we put right. these doors in for two for fire safety right i'm saying this very specific to our church sure sure um that we had to put these doors in okay right 
it hasn't changed. Right. Those doors are still there. They're still there. The amount right. of people like this. Why do we have to keep right. doing this? And and I think the the thing to point out for both libertarians and non libertarians, while some libertarians, because there are some libertarians who would say, you know, there needs to be an entirely free market, no government, no regulation, and that's fine. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm willing to experiment. Pl- I think there's places that could be done. Right. And I'm uh-huh. willing to experiment in a society like that. Uh, but for the non-libertarians, I think what they need to recognize is that even if we didn't go that far, even if we compromise somewhere a little bit less, yes, yep. we would still say it's not a free market because a free market would ultimately mean no regulation whatsoever. Right. Um, but it would be a lot less perverted than it is now. Yeah, freer and, market. And yeah. what we would do is we would just say, again, going back to this idea that – um, if the state is providing a service, the government is mm-hmm. providing a particular service, then whatever regulation that's imposed has to be directly related. Yes. So you mentioned like occupancy, like, hey, yeah. you know, you can only have, you know, two children in one room or one adult or something, you know, something like that. Right. Um, and, w- and then you, the question is, why, why is that regulation there? And they might say, well, we're providing a fire service. And when the firemen come, they need to be able to quickly assess about how many people. people they can expect to find in there because mm-hmm. they may come to a burning house and they may have no idea what they're walking into or who is in there. Right. And the idea is that we want them we're, – we're asking them, you go in and risk your life to save everybody in that home. And they have a basic idea of right. how many is – how many is it four people or 100 people? Right. You're right. And so, and, and so in that particular case, I think there's an argument to be made that, mm-hmm. hey, we want to have some sort of regulation – uh, on how many people can live in a particular property or hotels for sure, you know, stuff or, like uh, that. Restaurants, like say, restaurants. restaurants and how many people, like I'm not necessarily against those right. things. So I think maybe what we're saying is we would like a freer market. Freer, freer market. Like let's start I with would ex- this. I would totally experiment with an absolutely free market, but I know that our non-libertarian brothers and sisters and friends they can lose their minds they're gonna be like whoa whoa that's the extreme that they always want to argue oh why don't we just get rid of all this stuff so so i think the argument for them is all right how about this how about we whittle it down we change how we think we say whatever regulation you're Mm -hmm. providing um you have to justify it based on the service that it's related to and then from there other things can actually be moved to a different to into the free market which they kind of already are what like like what like Insurance, like car insurance, right? Uh-huh. Now, it's regulated like you have to have car insurance, right? right? Um, but think of it this way. And and then, the, you know, I think there are some regulations on what it has to cover and all that. Based or, on – usually it's based so, on how you're paying for the vehicle, stuff along right. those lines. But, they, and, but you can kind of choose a little bit inside of there. But the reality is like I go, to, I go to the bank and I say I would like to get a loan to buy a new car. They could say, all right, well, we only provide loans if you have this level of insurance, which I think they already do anyway. They do, yep. Right. So as long as you have uh, um, a, a loan, you have to have insurance and it has to be a certain level yes. of insurance. Yep. Right. So that's already on the free market. So we're already there with that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the insurance company could then turn around and say, OK, well, if we're going to insure you, then you have to have seatbelts in the car. Here's what we want. Yeah. You have to have a car that has tire pressure sensors. You have to have um, a car seat. If you know, but, otherwise, we're not going to insure you. So that would what that would mean on the free market is if I want to buy a car and I can't pay for it outright. But, but hold on, this is the thing. That I have we, to have we, all these things. No government involved. We have to be cautious though with the insurance company because what happens when they start dictating to this level of you know this is what you have to have inside the vehicle. Right. So then all you really did then was you pulled the government out and right. you basically got the auto manufacturers and the insurance companies working together. Sure. You, you know what I'm saying? So there has to be this as level As long of, as there's a free market, there's a competitor. So I'm the big bad uh, insurance company that says I want all these things because I'm getting a kickback from, you mm-hmm. know, uh, from from whatever motor companies. But you might come along and say, well, I'm not getting a kickback, kickback. But I'm going to give you some insurance. It's not going to be as good as, as good. DLs. Yep. Um, but it's going to have less requirements. So you can actually get a, you know, you and, can and use I, your old car that doesn't have all this. Cool right. Stuff. And I think that there's where we have to be cautious and that we go to freer market. Right. In that um, I, because right now the government telling us we have to have insurance. Right. Is definitely to me not free market. Correct. Okay. But I think that if we go, okay, listen, if the government's going to tell us we have to have it, right. we should be able to pick some guidelines. Right. And there is a level of that right. there. There's a level of what type of company do I want to deal with, right. a reliable one, stuff along those lines. And so I think that right. I think that your example of a car insurance is leading us to a freer it is market. A much freer. It, it, because it, the question will always be when the government says, well, okay, you need to have this or we're going to require this. Then the question is, what does it have to do with the services you are providing. Because if you cannot debate, I mean, not debate it, but if you cannot make that argument satisfactorily, then the answer is no. No. You cannot regulate it. 
You it, cannot require insurance if you can't tell me how that insurance helps you provide the service that you're providing. And, and let's be honest. The, not, not, not the hospital. Not, the hospital, not, not anybody else. Right. Just you. Because you, that's your role in this. Right. So here's the thing. I, like, I, I always like to question is stuff like that, car insurance. Let me be honest with you. If they told me I didn't have to have car insurance, I probably would anyway. Right. I think there's, but you know what? I made that decision. Right. And, and, and I think that there's a level of, because let's be honest, not everybody out there driving around has car insurance. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? They're willing to break the law, but it doesn't stop them from still driving and right. stuff, doing things. Um, so I, I think that even if car insurance wasn't mandated, where they mm -hmm. said, oh, you will do this, I think there's a level of people would still do it. Right. If you got rid of seatbelt laws, I don't mind wearing my seatbelt. I, right. I put it on anyway, but I chose. Right. And I think that's what we're getting you at. Chose we, through your we wife. Chose. Well, you know. Um, so <laughs> like no, every no, other man. No, because you know, you know what's funny? I don't mind. I, we'll start heading in here. Ding ding! It's always right. hers. I'm like, put your seatbelt on. We gotta go. Right, right. But that's another way they kind of mandate. Because you know what they say? I'm gonna put it on just so I don't have to listen to that ding dong thing the whole right, time. Right, right. But but here's where I'm getting. Talk about your wife or the car? Because you're the on car. car. No, I okay, better. We're on camera. It's for fully understanding the ding dong. The ding dong noise in this case is sure. No ding dong noise would be from. Me. No home wrecking here no, on this no, show. No, that's never what we would do. If you start talking to me at any length of time, there's going to be a level of home wrecking going on. Oh, Lord. But so I think that what we have to do. Edit I, and post. I, I think I, yeah, a lot of editing this week is I think that we, I think our goal has to be, I, I think that we desire, I think a lot of people, not just libertarians, desire a free market. Right. They, they want to be able to do the things that they want to do as they want to do it right. without government stepping in and saying, this is how you do it. Right. And we, we all want that level of freedom. Right. Uh, but I think that in reality, because we are so far the other way right now, I think we're going to have to work towards a freer right. market before we get to a free market. Right. And I think it requires people, non-libertarians, libertarians are already, we're, we're kind of already there in some sense, right? But the non-libertarians need to start really looking at this and saying, okay, how... Um, how does rather than look at it from the perspective of this is for my safety because we could I mean we could create endless Anything. and and that's what's been happening mm -hmm. there's endless every you know one child has a has an accident in some pe peculiar way yep. and, then and all of a sudden they're, they're like law. well we need to pass a law for yep. that and it's like well, wait a minute first and foremost you know the, the the argument that we've been having has been more like how many children does that uh, you know affect effect and and that mm -hmm. becomes a very that becomes kind of a heartless argument because it's like, well, not enough children die oh, this way. Like, well, how many children do you want to die then? Right. You know, it's always right. what it turns into. Uh -huh. Right. So I think I think, I think the, the way that we shift this conversation is to say, all right, how does this – how does the government um, – how do they provide a better service for the money that we're giving them, right? And then not only that, when it's on the free market – and everybody knows this. When something is on the free market, really on the free market, you've got all levels of quality. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've got an iPad. I've got a uh, tablet. It's not a uh, it, it's, 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 it's a name brand. It's a Samsung. It's an older one. Right. But it wasn't um, a top of the line. It was kind of like one of their. their you made that choice. Yeah, I, I made this choice. Right. And I, I don't want to compare like tablets to children per se. Right. But but then the thing. Oh, that, that was going to be your connection. Hold on. Right, Hold on. Right. You're doing a connection right. of tablets to children. Right. So all right. But it, what, what ends up happening is. When we have all these things on the free market, then we have a lot more flexibility in what we want to choose. And, and our can, level of, like, right. what is our true level and of we can decide, affordability? What do stuff? we really need for this, mm -hmm. right? Like, what what level do I need? Like, like if I have a big, huge truck, right? Like, just a monster, you know, F nine fifty, right? You know, it's got wheels that you know should go on grave digging. Like, like you don't understand how people get into it, type of thing, right? Yes. Uh huh. You know, if I have this huge truck. I can probably buy a cheaper quality um, uh, like car seat, car seat mm -hmm. right? Because I'm in a huge truck. The it, truck itself it, is going to protect my child. And not to mention that they throw out these guidelines you know? for this right here, but they yeah. don't think about individual child. Yeah. So, like some kids are, they're smaller than other kids right. or, you know, stuff right. like, where does this thing start? But if I got a smart car. Do you have a smart car? If I had one, I might want a more top of the line What's child that? car seat, yeah, right? But see, but that, that's. Because you, have you are going to run me over with your big truck. <laughs> exactly. But but the thing is that right there, that's the example of let us decide right. what level. And let's right. just be honest. A lot of times it's not a matter of whether we want to be safe. Right. It's a level of what amount can I afford right. to be safe. Right. And, and so I and, I and I make this into that, you know what, some people don't mind paying 
four hundred dollars for a car seat. Right. And some other people go, I would like to pay four hundred, but I can't. I only have a hundred dollars. Right. So right. you don't make the standard. You don't make government get involved. They keep changing the standard of that car seat that they all have to be four hundred dollars. Right. And then what happens right. is the ones who can't afford it, they don't have a car seat. What happens? They get stopped by the police. And now, and, right. and it just runs this nasty right. circle of. And what do we fall for next? Is exactly what you've been saying all along: safety. Right. Because it's for right. safety, we'll fall for a lot of things. Right. And, and, I, and, and I we think question it's, less when it's safety. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing is when there are more options available, when there are varying options, uh, there are varying degrees of cost for it, mm-hmm. I think what we'll find is that more people will engage in it. Because most people want their child to be safe. Yes. You know, and uh-huh. like you said, most people will probably go out and get the, the, the best car seat that they, they can, can afford. afford. You yep. know, um, they might get... You know, some people might say, well, I want this top of the line Play-Doh because I feel like this is, you know, the high quality Mm Play-Doh. You know, and somebody else might say, "Uh, you know, this one doesn't have bad ratings and I'm okay with this because it's just Play-Doh. And who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Right. And and when you start applying that to everything, because I I know we're talking about two things right now, but when you start applying it all over the place, Mm -hmm. then what happens is, you know, let's just say that you have, you know, lots and lots of money and I don't. Well, you might have a lot of money to go out and buy the best of everything. I may not. So then I'm still able to engage in all these different things and I can actually buy more things toward my safety or toward whatever I feel is appropriate for me, you know, and then when we leave it to the free market, um, you, you might even have the free market figure out how to produce things on its own over time, you know, that, uh, that allow, uh, more people to, to to consume different things. So if we take that thinking real quick, there's a way that we can kind of make this all fall into place without question. Okay. Okay. Watch Watch me wrap this all up. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to wrap it no, up. No, don't rely on me to wrap this okay. up properly. But here's what I'm thinking. As you're saying that, I'm going, okay, well, you know what's funny? If it's about safety. We have to have these seatbelts. We have to have all these other things that's going on. Um, how many classic cars do you see out there still? Right. Okay. And you know that at best, some of those only have a lap belt. Right. They don't have all these other things going on, right. but they don't go and say, hey, you have to park this car and you can never drive this again. They don't say that. Right. So it starts to make you question, what is the real reason for right. these other guidelines and right. these other things now in the newer cars? It's not safety. It's not the well-being right. of the people because if it was well-being of the people, they would stop those cars right. from being able to be used anymore. Right. So now it's just a matter of we found a way right. that we've raised the standard because government got involved right. and changed all the guidelines and expectations right. for everything. And if if it was about safety, you know what would happen? We would have the uh, regulation put into place, mm-hmm. and then five years later, they would evaluate it, and they would come back, and they would say, let's take a look at this, and let's just show you and, the evidence. And, um, they and you don't to. really mm-hmm. see that. Mm-hmm. You only see it when people are still debating a matter. So mm-hmm. like when, when cell phones first became popular, then there was like all these studies that came out, mm-hmm. and then there were, you know, like, oh, like holding a microwave to your head. Remember you know, that one was going you know, around? <laughs> here's, all the, here's all the accidents that happened, and then mm-hmm. there was more studies that came out and said, well, here's accidents that, you know, here, here's data that shows that um, there hasn't really been much of a change in auto accidents because of cell phones, right? So there's this big debate. Right. So that's when we got information. But as a rule of thumb, like, you know, if somebody's child gets harmed and then, you know, they pass Johnny's Law, yep. right? Nobody ever goes back and says, did Johnny's Law actually do, do anything? anything? Did it protect did any it just, more kids or we just or did it just law? cost us? That's... Because a lot of times these things, I think this is what people fail to realize. A lot of these laws, they cost us more than the benefit that we get from them. Yes. And right. not to mention the expenses of keeping up these right. laws and stuff along those lines. Right. Um, a, a few years ago, we were using like a thousand. If people don't pick up on what we're saying here, they're not paying attention because we've got right. like a thousand examples I'm of where this is. We're giving like, you so is, much. This is, so a, a few years back uh, in Chicago, there was a plane in the snow. It gone just off of the runway as right. it was landing. Not Nothing bad. Nobody got hurt or anything. Right. And I remember, I remember as soon as that happened, because they're covering it all across the news. I'm like, it's not really a big deal. It's slid off the thing. It's snow. It's, it makes sense. Right. And then I like I remember telling my wife, I'm like, oh, watch. Right. Watch how they want to start passing all these laws, all these things. And it started coming around like, hey, we got to They started talking about it. And I, I haven't followed up since because, you know, uh, but they started talking about like, hey, yeah, we got to find out what we can do from now on. What, what all, and they want to take all these precautions based off of one incident that nobody was even hurt in. Right. Here's what I'm saying is that it seems like our government will try to take advantage of every opportunity in order to insert themselves. Right. To change the standard. Now. Airlines, car seats, small businesses, we can see a level of all of these. They keep doing the same thing. Right. They keep getting involved. And once again, I think that all we're asking, we want others to ask is why. Yep. Just why. So there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this topic. 
The topic again was the free market. We wanted to talk about the free market in a way that non-libertarians and libertarians could really use it to enhance their own conversations. So if you're non-libertarian, our goal is that you have a new way to think about the free market and maybe some new questions to start asking. If you're a libertarian, we hope that you have a new way of talking to your non-libertarian friends about it and some mm -hmm. ideas. Hopefully some of the things that we said will impress upon you to say, oh, you know what? That's a good point. Hopefully in the next, you know, I'll remember that next time I'm having this conversation and I can bring it up to my non-libertarian friends because the idea is that we are sitting here talking about all these topics so that we can improve the conversation around us and lead to more freedom. Any last words? No, nah, I'm good. All right. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and move into that next segment. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. This is the bill review segment. Today we're actually not going to review a bill so much as a press release from the White House. So this press release came out on October 22nd, 2021, and it is from the uh, fr from the from the president and it's their national strategy on gender equity and equality so again it's not a bill so we don't have to worry about any legal things that i might mess up we're just going to be talking about this this bill i thought it was interesting so the reason that i do the bill review and review any of these kind of documents is because i think that people should be aware of them they should read them even if you don't read it in full at least read it in part so that you have an idea of what your representatives are doing you may agree with them. You may not agree with them. You may partially agree with them. These are things that we need to know as citizens in order to hold them accountable. So I'm going to read the very beginning of this. We're not going to read the whole thing. It's about five pages long, and it goes into all these things. I just want to highlight a few things and, and talk about them. Pastor Tubb has graciously chosen to go through this. You're lucky I'm even here. You're lucky, you're lucky I even right stayed now. for this segment right He's just right like, here. oh, man, oh my really? Goodness. we got to pull this? He's like... <laughs> You know, and I'll probably razz him a little bit here, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So here's what it says. The Biden-Harris administration issues first ever national gender strategy to advance the full participation of all people, including women and girls, in the United States and around the world. Then it goes on to say, President Biden and Vice President Harris believe that advancing gender equity and equality is fundamental to every individual's economic security, safety, health, and ability to exercise their most basic rights. It also it is also essential to economic growth and development, democracy and political stability, and the security of nations across the globe, ensuring that all people, regardless of gender, have the opportunity to realize their full potential, uh, to realize their full potential is therefore both a moral and strategic imperative. Okay, that's some great stuff. We're gonna really we're, we're going to really do some great things to ensure equity. But what's wrong with it? You're shaking your head. What's wrong? Listen, I have an on. The only thing I. All right. Let's start with this. First, you made me go to the White House page. All right. And to get a release from these people. Along with that, I, I think that the libertarian in me finds the complaints. So okay. what I have is a list of complaints right about and i'm is it I, longer than five pages did you did no, you write I, more listen, complaints oh, than the document uh, no, here's what i did because what they did over their five pages which i sure hope you post this so that everybody else it'll be in the show the notes that you put me through the stuff the that show you notes. put me through to do this um so i actually i think i basically have a complaint about each section on there okay i don't know if there was even a section in there where i go this is a pretty good idea. Right. Okay, so I, Libertarian, says, oh, wait, this will be real easy to find the problems with. So I don't know how you want to go through this. I I, I don't know where you want to go. Um, well, what's your first complaint? We'll just start there. Well, my first complaint is that you made me do this. Okay, okay that well, was complaint number one. Is okay. That you forced me to go to the White House. All thing. right, so that, that, that happened. Okay, so my complaint number two is that they're stressing that this is going to be great for the world. Okay. Oh, okay. Here's what we have to understand. Not everybody wants to be America. Right. Okay. Now, listen, I, I, disclaimer time. I love this country. And, and to me, I, I, I do a lot of complaining, but I also know it doesn't get better than this. Right. And say whatever we want. But here's what I look at. I also understand that other countries have their own society. 
right. whether it's based off personal beliefs, religious beliefs, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And you know what? They're actually okay with that. They're not trying to be a little America. Right. We've seen before what's tried when we've tried to advance our beliefs into another country. Mm-hmm. We've seen how a war lasts for 20 years and nothing right. gets accomplished. Right. Because they don't want to be American. And so I look at this and I go, wait a minute. You can't even get the people in this country on board in agreement with things. Right. And, and even these plans. Why are we looking to force it somewhere else? Right. So that, for me, is complaint one. Do you want to mention, before I go on to complaint two? <laughs> I, you know, I don't... I, I, folks, I am probably not going to disagree with Pastor Tubb on these things because I have my own list of complaints, but I want to hear what he has to say. And then as as our complaints overlap, which they might, then we will uh, we, we we will go over. Um, so, I so I marked up that very first paragraph that I read. Uh, and exactly. Yeah. So, so so I marked it up, and here's I'm going to read it to you, and I'll put it up on the screen as well, so you can see what I have marked up. But the problem that I I, I felt like okay, if they were going to issue something, there was a lot of stuff that just didn't need to be in there. So he said that uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris believe that advancing gender equity and equality is fundamental, and I actually scratched out advancing and uh, the words equity. And so then you would have President Biden and Vice President Harris believe that gender equality is fundamental to every individual's economic security, safety, health, and ability to exercise their most basic rights. And so I I believe that. I think that's fine. Absolutely. Equality is a good thing. We should all be equal under the law, which means we need to be treated equally Equally. under the law. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then I scratched out the entire next sentence. (laughs) You did do a lot of scratching there. I when did. you were doing that, I was like, why is he right. going through all of right. that? Right. So uh, the next sentence that I said doesn't need to be here because it is not your job is it is also essential to economic growth and development, democracy and political stability and the security of nations across the globe. That was right. my complaint of across the globe. They, right. That was OK. Go ahead. And, and, and so I'm like, this is not our our role isn't to try to change our society in order to somehow improve somebody else's mm-hmm. society. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't things in our society that maybe we need to stop doing or start doing. Right. For instance, we could stop meddling other people's affairs, and that would go toward economic growth, development, democracy, political stability, especially, mm-hmm. and the security of nations across the globe, mm-hmm. if we would stop going in and interfering with their business. But making, in some way, advancing gender equity here in our country is not going to provide that security Mm -hmm. or stability, political stability to some other country. All it's going to do is give us... uh, It's it's going to make more enemy. It's because I'm like... Right, because it gives us a reason to go in there and do something. We're like, oh, Mm -hmm. well, we got to go and do this. We got to Exactly. Is this the next thing that we have a war over? Right. Because you're not showing women's rights the way they think you should. And then all of a sudden this turns into that. Uh, Right. Listen, what you kind of mentioned there, and it's really not a topic, but you made me think of it, so now it's your fault, um, is the idea that so many times like we we get involved with with what's basically a civil war, Mm -hmm. and we insert ourselves. And, and then uh, we kind of want things, we want them to be little Americans over there. Right. And, and what I really truly believe is um, let a civil war play its way out. Right. And when it's done and you have an active government and they're done, then we say, okay, we'll work with you or not work with you. We right. don't get involved in the mix of right. things. But this is getting us right involved in the like, Right. How far are they going to go into other countries to force this belief right. of gender equity? Right. Like, where does it stop? Right. And, and even if it's not forced, even if they use like, economic sanctions, which I guess technically is force. That's but force. I, I, I'm thinking in terms of like war, you right. know, boots on the ground. But what about even the fact that we give money to you know, Even things. if we're not doing boots on the ground and drones, mm-hmm. we're still doing something, something that gets in the way. And remember, I operate on the idea that every person owns their self. Mm-hmm. And starting from there, then everything sprouts. And that means if somebody in another country owns their own self, and then the U.S. comes in and does something that impedes them from being able to do what they want to do, mm-hmm. Um, regardless of whether or not their government would do it, right. if we do it, then we are at, at least adding a violation, yep. if not creating one. And like I said, does that bring a stress around that right. and kind of that environment and that culture right. that we start doing that and it just sets things off worse? Because right. now maybe, listen, do I think that maybe some of these women who are oppressed in these places, do, am I, do I think that they're really happy in it? 
maybe not. Right. But another but another thing is 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 there really a chance that they can break out of that? Right. And they might not be able to either. Right. Because there might be enough force around there that says if we start making these women think like this, right. act like this, that then the men, for example, will become worse in that area. Right. And so what they thought was, okay, I get by, I don't really like it sometimes. And how many of us inside this country would say the same thing? Right. I, I don't like it, but I get by sometimes. Right. Like I what it becomes like a power cake of just right. it blows up if we try yep. to insert this type of stuff. Yep. And then the other problem that I have with this very this very beginning is it starts off with this notion that we're going to fix you, other country, by revising how we do us. And I don't that that sounds very similar to um, a couple getting together, and she, you know, like, and we see this happen all the time. A woman will say, "Well." If we get together, he'll stop doing he'll this. He'll stop doing it. I, I could change right? this or he'll... Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change this person by doing some actions on my part. I, I believe that what they have written here is the very same thing, but just on a global scale. It's on a, it's on the, it's on an international like, scale that they're basically saying, if we do this thing, we'll change this, this other person. But and why I don't did believe that become our role? Right. And, and that's not our role, nor does it actually work. No. Right. So that and, that and that we see that all the time in relationships, we see so many, and it happens frequently to women, but it also happens to men too. But we see it happen all the time. You know, one person will, you know, go out of their way, and they're like, "I'm going to try to change this person," and then they end up suffering in some way. Um, in the in the light end, it's they didn't get the relationship that they were looking it, for. It, in the worse end, it could be abuse or even worse than that, right? So you know, it, and, and that person who's getting changed at some point, they come to this realization, right. and they go, "I didn't even want this." Right. It, or, or it turns into, I ch think of it this way. I changed for you. Right. And now this is how you treat me because the his, let, let's be honest, America doesn't always have the best history of treating people after the fact. Right. So what happens if we go in there and we give them all these ideas and we bolt away and right. now they're like, well, I changed for you. Right. And now look what's happening. Right. Like, why did I do this? Isn't this right. there's the an animosity that, that we, there's an animosity on our part that we created. Mm hmm. They didn't create it. No, they were just going we about came their business. And we said, hey, we're going to change you and we're going to do some things different for us so that we're going to be better positioned to change you. Then that person doesn't change. And then we get mad and we're like, well, I did all this stuff for you. And they're like, I didn't ask you to do it. I didn't ask you to do any of that. You know? Exactly. I didn't ask you to do any of these maybe, things. Maybe, you know, and that person might be like, maybe I should change, but I'm not ready to. And you had no business trying to get me to change. Right. And, you know, it's the same thing with the US. So I think that this idea, that we're going to do anything, especially talking about, I think they're kind of riding the coattails of this gender equity idea, and they're implementing it in this international scale. And I'm but, not even clear exactly well, I don't even know how it works. It's, it's not even, like, we it don't even know how it's working or doing right. here. So how is it going to work right. in, in a culture that's so contrary right. to American culture? I mean, we're still working out a lot of things. You know, yeah. like, I mean, if you think about it, like I got another six complaints on here to prove right, that we are. Right. Well, I mean, think about something simple because we talk about gender equity. I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but um, I have held the door open for a woman who has right. kind of laughed at me and like, look, I don't need you to hold the door open for me. And I'm like, OK, so we don't. So even on something small and simple like that, there are women that believe like, hey. This is some patriarchal attitude that right. you have that you or need to get rid of. Being polite, but what happens when you don't but, do it for the one who expects you but to? But other women are like, "I appreciate that, and I I like it. My wife enjoys it when I hold the door." Have you really had somebody right? fuss about you? To you? Um, or I like, did. I, I, like I, for real. Years and years ago, I went on a date with a woman. Well, I don't know if it was a date, but we went out to the movies. I mean, I, it was one of those like. We remember call it a remember date. what we said right. before? We're not here to ruin families. Right, so right. Speak and, easy. And she literally made fun of me to my face for holding the door open. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she did make fun of me. But it was, was just like, about the door, right? And I'm like, yeah. I'm just, just door. making sure that it she's was. Like, she's like, hey, you know. She, was, she said something like, oh, I'm a, I, I got to be a man and hold the door. I don't need you to hold the door. I don't know. It, was like, it wasn't like, it was just, it was rude. It was so, so short. So then was in like, turn, the hell? did you make her pay for her own thing? I'd be like, oh, you're uh, right. You're right. But you paid no, for this your was, own dinner and movie. This was, this was after the fact. We're having oh, a oh, conversation. Of course. Now, all right. I, I got a pretty cool story. All right, guys, this is all free. I say this in the church all the time. This is all free. Okay, right, you right. say that. This was kind of funny. Nothing to do with topic, but all kind of is. And, and so um, my son was dating this girl and talking to other girls at the same time. So he got a message on his phone during dinner, and he kind of did this. 
So she didn't say nothing about it. ate dinner, let him pay and everything. When it was all said and done, she goes, hey, who was that? And just brought it up there after she got, I was like, good for her. Right. She waited until after dinner right, to right. be like, oh, by the way, you jerk. You, you know, so right. the same one that you were dating, say, hey, oh, thanks for opening the door, you jerk. Right. But after it was all said and right. done, like, hey, I'm going to get mine right. out of this first. So, so if we don't have, so to me, in my, you know, backing it up even further, I would say, look, we haven't worked out culturally what we believe right. is uh, is the level of equity that we need because we're still having that debate. I mean, clearly, women should be treated equally under the law. I I, I think that's probably equally is fine. You know, equally that's fine. That's not disputed. Now we might mm-hmm. dispute what that means, right? Right. And but when it comes to equity, like what is it? What does it mean to really? Uh, uh, to to really have a society where it's equitable, right? And and for libertarians, it's gonna we're gonna look and we're gonna say, if you're being treated equally, equally that is then that, that is your equity, that. right? Like, That's basically equity. As long as everybody's equally treated that that under the law, that your rights should not be higher or infringe on my right. rights. And right. That we're we're all the same. In right. This. Um. You don't get special treatment because you fall into this class, nor right. do I. We right. all say, okay, we all have the same rights. Correct. Inside of that, we're good, and we can right. operate from there. And and then you determine the path for yourself with the same level of freedom that I yep. have to determine my path. Mm-hmm. And when we have that, who knows what you come up with? You know, there there might be a uh, a woman who gets into the stem cell industries, uh, not industry, but you know, stem, yep, uh, science, technology, yeah. and, and so forth. And it, you know, they may get it. My, my wife is an industrial engineer. She came over from Indonesia and mm-hmm. she got a degree in uh, really in, in in engineering. Okay, yeah, she's like she's smarter than me, both just well, in general and yeah. educated wise. <laughs> uh-huh. Like I. I I told I, I boast about marrying up, but then the con the 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 other side of that is that she married down down. There is and I'm like yeah. so you're kind of like okay it's, it's great it's it's, it's and I'm it's even like shorter so it's even worse at the right? same time it's like hey she's thanks right. and she's like an inch taller than me too so like, like you know so everything in there goes wait a minute so I could have done better than yeah. you. Like, you, like you're yeah. agreeing? I can, well, yeah. you know what? This has nothing to do with... Right. Okay. She all married right, so, down. She has to look down at me. I mean... In so many ways, it's all terrible. there. Terrible. But so she didn't need the equity. She just needed the equality to pull that off. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so, all right. So my complaint, what is technically number three, because number one was you made me do this in the right. first place. Okay. Right. Um, eight on the list, it, it, it mentions about climate change. Right. I got that marked. Do we'll you, sw- right there. Right, right here. I got a whole I highlight. No, no scratch out, but I just highlighted. Yeah, and, and, and I go, I started looking at this. You want to read that? You, Absolutely, let's read it out. Um, the, str- the strategy identifies 10 interconnected priorities. Number one, economic security. Number two, gender-based violence. Number three, health. Number four, education. Number five, justice and immigration. Number six, human rights and equality under the law. Number seven, security and humanitarian relief. Number eight, climate change, number nine, science and technology, and number 10, democracy, participation, and leadership. Now, let me be the idiot, okay, because that's the role I do well, okay? What does climate change have to do with this? I think it has everything to do with it. Oh, please enlighten me. I'm going to enlighten you. Uh, Okay. I think climate change- Is caused by women? No. I think think this is what they really want. Okay. And- Rather than saying, "Oh, you know what? In order to advance women, we need to, uh, you, you know, we need to look at climate change as well." I think it's actually the other way around. I think they say, "How can we get a path to to dealing with climate change the way that we want?" Mm-hmm. You know what? If we include gender, now I don't think the conversation happens quite that manner. Right. I think it's you know more just like you're looking for reasons there it is. to uh, impose your vision of climate change. Yep. On the world, because climate change is written in here, like the word climate change is in this document like three or four times. Mm-hmm. I can't, I, I counted them, but I've forgotten how many now. It's like three or four, though. Uh, they mentioned it three or four times. And so the question is, uh, and we're starting to see that conversation happen with COVID. Yep. We, and we've oh, been, I saw that. Right? Yeah, I'm like, we're, we've been, and we've been seeing climate change happen. You know, we, it's been a conversation happening over time in very in many different areas. So I think that climate change is in here primarily because. That's really the goal. The goal is to get to climate change. Right. So 
but that's and, my and opinion. So, so the I guess the idea is if they can link it right. to whatever right. topic. Oh, this right. is the hot topic. Like you said, right. this is the hot topic right now. Gender equity is the right. hot topic. Let's see if we can push all of our things under this umbrella. Right. And then it kind of spreads out. So I just kind of – I didn't have a long argument because I'm not getting into the climate change. Stuff. Okay. Like, I'm avoiding that. But I was just kind of concerned of like what the heck does that have – because the rest of their list isn't necessarily bad – in the idea, once again, get rid of equity, put in equality. Right. That all makes sense. Right. Okay, I'm down for all this. Is all we're we're good. But climate change has nothing to do with it, unless they want the women right. to be able to equally ruin the climate at the same time. Right. So I, to me, there's nothing there. I mean, I think the only one here that really could even become close to the purview of government would be number two, gender-based violence. Okay. The rest of it, as long as Everybody is equal under the law. I believe it works itself out. Economic security, yep. health, education, justice and immigration. Uh, okay, immigration, you know, that, that probably is, you know, under government at the moment because right. government does have a control over immigration. What, 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 wait, wait, say it again. Well, they have control over, gov uh, over immigration right now, right? The government does. Like for real? Well, yeah, they, they limit how they, many they, people come in here. I what? didn't say they should. I'm just saying they no, do. No, no, hold on. But you're telling me that right now that our government – has control of who's coming into our country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no they... Oh, okay. I thought okay. No, no, no. Okay, so let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. What I mean to say is, like, that is something that they actively already have under the umbrella. Yes, right? okay. Like, that's, that's something I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, no, uh, sure. I, don't, I don't mean to say that they're actually doing a good job of <laughs> right, it. Right, yeah, okay. I'm just saying, like, this is something that they're already doing. Right. Whatever, however sloppily they are doing it, right? Um, human rights and equality under the law, again, that's just under, you know, Equality under the law that will take care of itself, you know, uh, security and humanitarian relief. Okay, again, humanitarian relief could be something. I don't think that is something that the government should be doing. The government should not be doing humanitarian relief um, other than maybe saying, hey, if another country has a disaster, say, hey, we'll, we're willing, you to, know, help. We're willing to use some of our like our National Guard troops and some of our equipment that we have, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, that, product, that, but product. That, that, that's you know, a, that's we, we send fair, over water and stuff along yeah, those lines. Yeah, you know, but I think most of that, most humanitarian relief could really be done privately. Um, climate change, again, we, we just talked about just, that. Science and technology, they don't need to do that. And then democracy. <laughs> well, you're saying they don't need to as in the government. They don't they, need to as Again, when, 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 um, when government is there just making okay. sure that everybody is equal under the law, then everybody is equal to pursue science and technology however they That's so the thing. choose. Once again, we talked right. about this even before. Market will dictate. Right. If they have a desire right. to, they can. And, and all we want to say is if they have a desire to, right. let them have the opportunity right. to. And then when we free we it don't up, force we just them get out of the way, you know, mm -hmm. then then they do things. And then the last one was democracy, participation, and leadership. That's really, no, you know, that's none of that's really the government's purview. I mean, the government would have a very vested interest in democracy toward itself. Right. You know, like, hey, let's make sure that things operate so that we can keep operating the way that we want to. So, you know, I, I don't think that the government should be involved in that mm -mm. whatsoever. Um, participation. If I want to vote and participate, then I do. If I don't, then I don't. I don't. You know, the, government, the government doesn't need to be doing anything on that matter. And then leadership. Well, they can't lead already. So that's blind leadership. So, yeah, blind. Well, exactly. Yeah, you're right. the best example for this one. So. All right. So I have complaint number four. Okay. Which, but I, I, I don't even know if I want to cover it right now, to be honest with you. So, and I know we have time issues. So I want to skip down to my complaint number five. Okay. Let's see if I got uh, the same one. Strategic priorities, economic security is what's coming directly out of the thing. It says, ensure that people have equal access to good jobs, including by addressing persistent gender discrimination and systemic barriers of full workforce participation. Invest in care infrastructure and care workers to help rebuild the economy and lower costs for working families. Uh, it also says dismantle the barriers to equal opportunity in education that undermine the ability to compete on a level playing field, recognizing that education affects future economy security. Okay. So I'm looking at this and I don't know, are, are you really seeing where I'm at right there? Uh, I'm not finding it, but go ahead. You think I made this up? Is that no, I don't saying? think you made it up. I just uh, think I can't find it. No, like I said, uh, mine, I, I tend to go in order of what I had. So I might've gone further ah, down the are. list. Here we are. Okay. Um, I scrolled past it by accident. Okay. So as it is, as we recover from the pandemic, we have the opportunity to build an economy that works for women and their families to build back better. Now, here's what I, I, I tend to look at. Once again, this falls under the problem of this should be something that's across the board for everybody. Right. I don't think I, I, I'm a big advocate of the best person for the job. 
Right. I, and I don't care what race. I don't care what gender. Right. They're the best. You put them in there. Right. Okay. And so when they start getting involved in these type of things, ensure that people have equal access to good jobs. That's right. Right. Okay. Where, what happened to their equity? Right. Well, well, like I, like I, I look as I go, wait a minute. It seems like they've lost because I thought equity was that we're going to kind of make things right again. Right. Do, am I understanding that right? Right. Yeah. The idea of equity is that, um, you know, they, they, they assist where there's a barrier, where, the, where there's a perceived barrier for some people that doesn't exist for others. Okay. Right. Like that's kind of this idea. But even here, I, I would take, I would take issue with this statement right here. Where it says, ensure that people have equal access to good jobs. There's a single word in there that I have a big problem with good jobs. What's that's a good the, job? Well, it's not your job. It's not your job to figure I mean, It's not your role to figure right. out what a good job is. Right? Didn't they? I'm sorry. Didn't what they just that do that mean? though with shutting down the Keystone? And they right. said, "Oh, these guys go work on solar panels." Right. In their minds, the right. the, the the financial is right. similar. It's so to the, them, it's oh, it's the same. They can go program. It, it, okay, it, maybe if they want to do that, if they have the the aptitude for that, they may somebody may not have the aptitude for software programming but may have a great aptitude for mechanical stuff. And maybe yes. they would be a great mechanic or maybe even an engineer, mm -hmm. right? And so maybe they can design a new motor, or, right? But, but that's them. I, I mean, likelihood, if you're designing new motors, you might do, there's, there's, there's cross. So I don't want to say like you can only do one or the other, but I'm just saying somebody may be more inclined toward to one particular area. And let them do that. Right. Like I said, find that thing and do it well. Right. Now, if you notice in here, invest in care infrastructure. Right, and care workers to help rebuild the economy, lower costs for working families. So it really sounds like what they really want to do is they want to take our children, put them somewhere so that everybody can go to work. That's that's Which, kind of how I read this. In, in theory, it's okay. It's, it's but they want to women. determine. It's, right, it's, we want more people out working. Okay. Because they get but, more but tax money, again, I guess. Remember what we said earlier is about how they're including these words. Climate change was put in right. there. And, and notice how the, infra, the the issue that we're having currently right now in Washington is they're trying to figure out this infrastructure and how infrastructure right. doesn't just mean roads and bridges right. and stuff anymore. Now it means people. Right. And if you think about it, there they did it again. Right. They put the language in there again. Yeah. Invest in care infrastructure. Okay. Right. That's not a thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? As we're taught, infrastructure is these things. And now they're kind of, they're, they're changing. I, I think that words have meaning. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that when they just kind of change meaning and they move things around, we start kind of getting into these areas that all fall into what are you really trying to get at? Right. What is the purpose of this? Um, and, and the thing is this, uh, dismantle the barriers to equal opportunity in education. Now, let me be honest with you. I, I think that as a whole, it's kind of there. Right. Like, are, are are we bringing attention to things that well, aren't really a problem? Okay, what do you mean? Well, when I read that, mm -hmm. dismantle the barriers to equal opportunity in education. Right. I'm like, are you telling me that you want to get rid of the uh, public education system? Because ah, that's a huge barrier to equal is. opportunity. You're right. The, the it, system itself, because they're so busy trying to do everything but educate kids. Right. Like, there's conversations every single day on, oh my God, what about CRT? Okay, what about this? Systemic racism. They're talking about all these things that aren't reading and math and science. This, oh, and, you mean the things that they're there for? Right. And, and I'm like, I look at it and I say, when a child can graduate and they can read at a particular, you know, at a, at, a, at a solid level that where they should be, mm -hmm. like a college level or maybe even a, you know, a 12th grade level, you know, whatever that, whatever we determine that might right. be. When they understand science and they understand mathematics, even just basics of just right, basics, yeah. Right. When they understand that, then they are primed to go many, many places, because I, I, we've all probably met or heard about some young person who graduated and maybe they kind of got pushed through high school, and their reading ability wasn't so Went great. To school with one of those, right? Their their math wasn't so great. Well, guess what happens? Now they've graduated. Their options are college or go get a job. Right, and and, some and if you're not for prepared either. for if you're not prepared for college, then you go get a job. Well, if you're not if you're at a lower academic level, mm -hmm. then you're limited on the jobs that you can get. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do it. You can, but it starts getting increasingly more difficult. It, so, and and, like, and that's part of the problem. Like, if if you're going to have a system where you educate kids. Your focus needs to be explicitly on educating. And they make up excuses like, oh, well, we can't educate because of these other reasons. And I'm like, garbage. Yeah, yeah, and and right. we don't have to get into it now. We can maybe have another conversation some other day about yeah, it. Yeah, you know what? But there's plenty of historical because evidence to say otherwise. I would love to have 
the education. That's probably coming up, isn't it? Is yeah, it we're going to, yeah, education, okay. I believe, So I won't even care about that. I'll let that one ride until right. we go into that topic. Yeah, I'll okay. Save, I'll save all my pontificating for then. Uh, exa- oh, yeah, because I can camp, we can camp out in education yeah. for a while. It might be a two parter. Um, my complaint number six uh, gender based violence. It says, uh, work to eliminate gender-based violence wherever it occurs by developing and strengthening national and global laws and policies, investing in comprehensive ser- services for survivors, and increasing prevention efforts. Right. Here's the problem. Who's determining what's violent? Right. Okay. Because some people, we're coming to a time now where our words are violent and now right. we need to start. To, and right. so we want to control your language. We're going to teach right. you how to speak the way we want you to speak to others. Right. Um, what's going to happen once again, when they're talking about, they want to spread this thinking to other countries. I can assure you right now, there's going to be a level of violence that's already happening inside of those countries. This is not going to be falling into these parameters. Right. They're, they're not going to fall in line with this. Oh, no, their culture says, this is how we treat women. Right. Okay. Looks so we've already talked about. So I look at this and I go, wait a minute. So we're we're going to eliminate gender based violence. What we also have to understand that that's a two way street. Men and men also right. are abused. Yes. Stuff along those lines. Um, but like I said, my thing was this is that um I, I get nervous whenever they start mentioning, which they seem to do in here quite often, other. Like they're mm-hmm. talking about to global laws right. and policies. Yep. That's not our place. Right. It's And so now they're saying that despite the other things they've already talked about, we want to go make work over there. Right. Now we want to make sure that the way that they're treated violently, which right. once again, we're not condoning physical violence to right. anybody. Correct. But I, I, and I, and I do understand that words have meaning and words can hurt, but we also have to understand that who's making that standard. Right. Because I do not agree with our government and stuff lately about what right. they determine are hurtful words. Right. I believe that we have a right to express ourselves. And, yeah. if you, and if you don't like it, it doesn't mean that I'm violent towards right. you or I'm trying to hurt you. Right. It just means you're wrong. Right. And, and so, right. And, and so, so uh, once again, that was another topic of where I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Um, you're trying to take what is our belief that we don't even necessarily agree right. on and move it to another country. Well, it's it's an interference in the freedom of association, which is a very uh, – it's a deeply held idea in the libertarian community, right? That is, I can associate with you on whatever grounds that I want or I cannot associate yep. with you on whatever grounds I want. So I might say, well, Pastor Tubb is a church-going guy, and I don't really like being around those churchy people because they're always so preachy, right? I'm not necessarily disagree with you on that one either. All so, right, so. so I might say that. Uh-huh. Or I could also say it doesn't bother me. And I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. And if he starts getting a little bit too pushy, then I'll just say, "Hey, back up a little bit," and we'll go on our way. We'll go on our way, right? Like mm-hmm. so. I, so there's there's two different directions that I can handle that, and it's nobody else's place. Same thing here um, with the you know the gender based violence. When we when we when we talk about physical violence, it's a little bit different story because I think that there is a, a, a there is a, a a role for government to play when it comes to actual physical violence. Right. Like we don't have a society that we don't have like the anarchist society that is necessarily prepared to deal with it other, you know, without a government. Right. So we so the system, the society that we have currently right now does. I don't want to say need, but for lack of a better word, it does kind of need the government to play some sort of role like, hey, he punched her. Right. She punched him. We you know, the, the government is here now to intervene only in as much as absolutely necessary. Right. But when we start getting into like. Are violent is where our words violence, but then we start violating this idea of freedom of expression because, you know, maybe I walk, maybe I walk in and I say, you know, what's up, bitches, and then you might not use profanity and you say, how's it going, my little engine friend, right? <laughs> you know, and and some people might say, well, those are you know these are you know words that really hurt my feelings for whatever particular reason because I'm you know I'm a woman mm-hmm. and I feel like the word bitch is you know is, is is violent toward me or I'm a native american so therefore I feel like you know the word engine is degrading to me and it, you know it makes me feel uncomfortable like I can't be so there. now is that violent you know, right like, and and so somebody else is deciding for us how we might interact now, do have we opened up this window that allows them to once we say we want government involved in what's physical violence but they can fight back and forth about what's physical violence but now we've kind of opened up to well it's violent right okay so we're not we've no longer limited them to physical violence if i put hands on you you have a right right to kind of fix that but now it's opened up a little to me a little too far Right. That they they're very inside the phrasing of this. They're oh, very broad. Absolutely. Oh yeah, they're, they're very broad, and then it's you start going. Very open. Wait a minute, and that beca- to me that becomes very dangerous. It's open to interpretation yep. 
And because it's open to interpretation, that means it's open to virtually anything that somebody might want to do. Because all they got to do is interpret and say, this is what it means. So if we accept it as is. Now, I put a note in here. Yep. And I said, it says, those experiencing gender-based violence remain dependent on others. And so one of the things that I, you know, kind of always sticks out is when we start looking at helping somebody else. And it gets, a, it, it's very tricky because we want to be careful about the kind of preventative measures that we take. Because I believe that there are some preventative measures that might work, maybe, arguable, but they also present, they, they, they put a person in a place to depend on, be dependent on somebody else. Somebody else, okay. And so this is like when... Um, you think they, they, you think they're seeing this as an opportunity for government to swoop in and be like, dependent on us? It was, it was popular a long time ago for a lot of you, like your... your, your um, the, the woke crowd, the social justice warrior types, mm -hmm. they would come in and they would basically like police language and they would say, hey, you can't yep. say that because if you say that, then all these people, this group of people over here is going to feel marginalized and they're going to feel like they're they... are going to without... Right. Can't they speak? Right. Can't they right. They're going to feel uh -huh. that, they, that, that, they, uh, that they don't belong. They're going to feel this. And so then they would say, you need to stop talking or you need to stop saying that so that this person will feel more comfortable. And so what I look at it and I say, so what you're saying is, this person, they're um, they can't advocate for themselves. They need not you. only can they, not only are they not able to advocate for themselves because somebody else is speaking for them, but also they're being trained to wait on me to, to behave. Say something. Mm -hmm. Right? They're waiting for me to stop behaving so that they will be comfortable. Right? And and I think that this is a problem because you create codependency because rather because when I was being picked on, it would have been nice. I felt like at the time if somebody would have stepped in. Okay. Nobody did step in, right? And so I ended up having to resolve things myself. But, but you know, that, I that's became life. empowered. That's it. Right. right. You're like, oh, I can. And do so this. I feel like so, rather than empowering people, what we're doing is we're stepping in to intervene on their behalf, but we're doing it in a way that doesn't actually empower them. It still keeps them dependent. And, and can I make this very else. clear that I think that my problem with this is I have no problem for individual advocates of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But this is government. Yes. And, yeah. and, and, I, think, and, and, I, and I think this is my problem. Right. Listen, um, we have services here in town for uh, women. Well, it goes to men also, but we know technically violence right. tends to go one way to the right. other. Right. Um, and so there's actually this place here in town. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention Hubbard House. They're, they're yeah, a great sure. pro Okay. They're a great program about um, helping women who have been in domestic violence. Right. Stuff. And they have different ways that they go about doing it. Um, but that's, that's a private entity. Yes. Being an advocate of, right. I can help you, right. as opposed to the government right. coming and saying, and I think that's right. what bothers me because I don't have a lot of trust in government understanding right. what's going on with the people. As we've mentioned, government has one design, keep themselves going. Right. Okay. And so I always get nervous when government wants to get more involved right. with things along these and, lines. And and we see it here. Where is it here? Right here, this word prevention. prevention. Right? So this is the big difference between government and a private entity. Government, when they think of prevention, they think of uh, preventing the perpetrator from doing something. And so you'll see that most of the laws, everything that basically government tries to do, tries to curtail somebody from doing something but, in the first place. Right. Right. So they're really dealing with the the perpetrator, the perceived or real perpetrator, mm -hmm. right, of a particular um, action. And they're like, well, we're, we're going to stop you. From, so we're going to put into place, you know, this new rule, this new law that you're supposed to that do. You, right. Right. Whereas a private entity, they don't have that power. So the only option that they have is to work with the victims or the the potential right. victims. Uh -huh. And so, and we know that many times women are not just a victim one time, they're repeatedly a victim. So if a woman is abused once and then she ends up at, say, the Hubbard House, the Hubbard House doesn't have the authority to say, all right, all these men have to do things to make this woman feel more confident about herself, but whatever. All they got to work with is the woman. Mm -hmm. So then they can they can work and say, all right, well, the only thing that they have an option is to say, let's 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 look at how you're engaging in your relationships and let's see if is we can build you up, up so that, so that you are more empowered to um to have better relationships, right? And, and so all, all they're going to try to do is they're going to try to say, okay, we're going to insert ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in inserting ourselves, we're going to basically tell you what we want you to do, but right. we've already seen Laws don't necessarily keep people right. from doing what they ought not be doing anyway. Right. So you're right. I I think that we have to be cautious. And what happens when they talk about prevention efforts? Well, I would say um, come to Christ, live for Christ, and guess what? That right. will take care of. And then right. other people who don't. So you got to wonder what direction are they going to go in? Right. Do do they go 
do they take now listen as much as you know i feel about my faith and everything like right. that i i don't believe i have the right to make other people right. follow these what happens when the government starts saying well i don't think faith has anything to do with this right you know then we're a little or, or if it goes the other way when they say hey i think everybody should act like a christian and then these things won't happen right. that doesn't make it work either right and, and so you're right the prevention yeah and the government and the government will consistently seek to force somebody to engage in a way that they are not currently behaving, whereas a private entity will do something different. So i uh, put it in a really good example since we were talking about words uh, you know, being violence and whatnot. It, the government might come out and say, all right, um, you cannot use certain language to describe women. Okay? okay. And if you do, you'll be punished for it in some way. And, and, and they can do it maybe within their own house, you know, federal and state yeah, yeah. employees. They may uh, they may do it with federal contractors, That whatever. You know, they could, they could implement it in many other ways. And, and because this is so broad, it's broad. who uh -huh. knows where they could go with it, right? That, and that's my problem. But say, say the Hubbard House or any organization, mm -hmm. what they can do instead is, well, they can't dictate and say DL or TUB, you can't say these things around our client here. All they can do is say, all right, client, Let's work to avoid people that talk like that in the first place. Yeah, don't put these people in your life. Right. Now, 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 granted, sometimes you can't tell. Going right. along these lines, you don't know who's going to be the offender in the future, right. stuff along those lines. Sure, sure. Uh, but like I said, I, I think that my problem is not individual advocate groups, mm -hmm. not people that right. you support groups. Yep. I think not, that's fine. Not, not I, I don't like when government gets involved. Yeah, because and, – and, and, and I don't either. And, and I think it's primarily because uh, the direction in which they go. Yeah. Right? Government has an incentive to control other people's behavior – Rather than – which don't really empower the individual. Not at all. This, no. is, this is why they I have a don't... problem with all their policies. And we'll get into this. Well, they're coming. Yeah, along. okay. All right. Like as we get into more and more topics, you're going to start seeing the same theme play out where we look at it. We say, look, this is where government interferes, and they're not actually solving the problem. They just are pretending to solve the problem right. where a private entity approaches it in an entirely different way. And the biggest difference that you'll see is – are they actually empowering the person that is uh, that that needs to be empowered? However, that whatever that means, government almost has the desire not to empower individuals. Right, they really want the government. They well, really right. want the people relying on them in all right. aspects, and so that that's their natural thing. Whereas private entities are more apt to, hey, you know what? I want to turn this out and get them into right. a better place. Whereas government says, I want to turn them out and get them back to me. Right. Um, complaint number seven on mine. Um, I have it. You'll find it on there, obviously. Expanding access to health care. Okay, and they have. Build on the historic work of the Affordable Care Act and continue to expand and improve health care globally. Okay. Okay. Now, what they've done, remember, language matters. Right. And you saw what they did. They hearkened back to a program that many Americans have already said, well, this is horrible. Right. And, and, and they've almost made it now the foundation right. of what they're going to base things off of. They, they, they found a way to kind of continue a bad program. Right. Because they like it. Right. Okay. So I kind of was set off a little bit by that. And then it gets into, once again, to expand and improve healthcare globally. Right. Stop. Right. We're not doing a good job. And we covered healthcare already. Right. Uh, and, and we're not doing a good job here. I'm not sure we have the best model. And I right. don't think they're presenting the best model that says, let's replicate this. Right. Let's go do this somewhere else. I mean, if we just look at obesity rates mm -hmm. over time, it's clear that we need to clean our own house. Yes. Right. And and that's not a, I'm not saying that once we clean our house, if that were to happen, then we can get everybody to okay. follow up. No. I'm not saying that's okay. <clears throat> I'm just saying that just just looking at like the super simple response is we're not doing it. Who are we Who to are tell we to somebody, somebody else, else that they should do it, that, that they should improve when we've got a lot of work in our own house? Right now, then. Once we clean our own house, then we can have a real argument about is it our place? But then, and again, yeah, I would say no. Say no. <laughs> but but I think that then then we become a model, right? And then people look at it and go, right. Oh wait, that right. worked. This portions of this might right. work for us. It's not right. that we force it onto them then, right? Uh, because like I said, I think we have a history, unfortunately, of trying to make everybody act like us, right? But it's funny. They're saying about how bad we are, right. and yet we have no problem supposedly trying to make others act right. like us. I'm like, if right. we're so bad, why would we want to spread this thinking across yeah. the globe? And a model is more effective anyway. I mean, think about it. Think about it in the negative sense, right? Here's the negative sense of it. Um, girls watch TV and they might see, you know, the um, you know Miss America pageants and all that. And like, oh, I want to be like them. Or they might see some actual models mm -hmm. on TV. And they're like, oh, I would like to be a model. And so then they, you know, they eat tissues and they starve themselves basically so they can be super thin. 
So that's the negative way Eating that tissues, a modern is that a real thing? Eating tissues. Yeah, is a real I, thing? I, I've read that. I've read For that. Real? I've read that supposedly. I, I, you haven't been eating anything. I, I don't yeah. know if it's actually true, but I've read it. So okay. That way. Now I feel like I want to look this up. I right. Now I got to Go look and say, hey, are they so, eating uh, tissues right. like I'm, for real? I'm, I'm, now okay. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to be fact checked on. Right? Okay. Now, they're going to be like, dude, he's totally wrong. Don't listen to him. No, they're, they're not he thinks people eat tissues. That's going to be the thing. Of all of this, instead, they're going to focus on. You know, DL thinks they eat tissues. You know. Anyway. So that's the negative. But the but the positive one is like, how many times have you? met somebody and you're like dude you've lost some weight and they're like yeah yeah man i'm on this new diet like oh what are you doing oh i'm doing keto i'm doing paleo i'm doing you know uh i'm eating vegetarian through the week and then only meat on the whatever you know mm -hmm. the, the, all variations of different things and then people have a conversation about it and then inevitably frequently somebody says that yeah, maybe i should give that a try i try it right because mm -hmm. like i've been trying to lose some weight and it's not working maybe i try what you're doing happens all the time right so if we clean up our own house you know and i don't mean by force but we just clean up our own house. Yes. Then what we end up happening is we have a model and then other people can look over here and be like, wow, that'd be great. Because you know what? Americans do it all the time. They're like, dude, check out this Scandinavian country. We should do everything all, that they're doing. Yes, exactly. Every single time, right? And, and, and they want to use it. And, and but let me be honest with you. I'll be like, well, that's them. I say that right. all the time. Well, right. What's I got right. to do with us? And I want the same for, I right. want them to be able to say that's them. Right. What's I right. got to do with us? And so I want us, like, I want us functioning properly. I think once again, we've seen that you insert government functioning properly doesn't always come out right. right, okay? And so my thinking is this. If you notice, a lot of what they're doing here gets them back to government again. Right. It's not It's not self-responsibility. Right. It's not do these type of things. Like, the, look at what you've said, you've mentioned it many times now, empowering. Right. This is not empowering. Nothing right. inside of what we're going to read here is empowering right. individuals to pick up your game and go live a better life right. for you. This is all we're going to tell you and then in turn telling you, we're going to make everybody across the world know this. I don't like the fact that globally it's mentioned here in the many other places. Yes. Number we're, we're scaling something we haven't worked yet. So we're right. coming up We're coming up on time. We're gonna. I think we've tore this thing up enough. But I have two more. You have two more. No, don't worry about it, dude. Just, it's your show. Go ahead, no, no. Let's see. Let me, let's ask the audience. Yeah, it no, sounds they like said, they, they said, want to keep going. They say keep going. No, no we're good. Because like, 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 I'm looking at this and I go, you know what? To a level we have. Um, I after it's funny because now talking this out instead of just kind of pulling this out, going this sucks. Right. Um, talking it out, I realize you know what? I I do have kind of this ongoing theme throughout all of these, and a right. lot of them is they're not empowering people. Right. And they just want to force our ideas on other countries. Right. And and, and uh, that, that kind of is my theme. So guess what? So. The main reason I'm against all of this mm -hmm. is it's not empowering individuals to go live a life that is best for them right. without relying on government. And in turn, we're trying to take our beliefs from our government and right. force them onto other people. Right. And I'll add one more thing to that. No, no, no. If I couldn't add, you don't get to add. We shut it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the final thing to add is that at the very beginning, it was said gender equity. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal allegedly was to help Biased. women and, mm -hmm. and, and um, young, young girls. Right. And... I don't think that this does that. I mm -hmm. think what it does is expands their power. Yes. And it doesn't help the people that they say they're supposed to help. So I think that's our, that's our that's our three things for this. And we have went incredibly long for this bill review. Oh. Yeah. We're, is, that, is that time just that, for this? That's the time for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's where oh, we are. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. You have uh, to make three different episodes this I know, week. right? Let me have to split <laughs> that them That might be up. the easiest thing to do. Like, we're going to... We're going to cover all this right now. That might be the easiest thing to do is break these up into individual sections and we just release them. Maybe, maybe, okay. folks. Who knows what we're going to do? All right. We want to try to keep it about an hour. I know people are busy and and, and, they, and they, they've got things going on. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll, we'll figure out how we're going to split this apart. You'll figure it out. Uh, yes, I will figure, figure it out. It out. Yes. Okay. I will get with the producer myself <laughs> and I will see what he wants to do. Okay. So we'll figure that out. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this bill review. It wasn't quite, again, We're not. it wasn't a bill. And Just a bunch I'll, of horrible I'll, ideas I'll on one link website. to it in the show notes so that you can check it out yourself and you can be like, you can judge. Maybe we got it all wrong. Maybe you got some better ideas. Throw some comments in there and let us know. But for now, that's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, 
If you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.